So I decided, uh, my observation about America was a little bit, American, the American Muslim dynamic was a bit, it was formulating. And my, what does that mean, formulating? First, I was enamored by it, right? Where, mashallah, we're doing so much da'wah, we have these conventions, we have these, you know, these, these amazing things happening, and the MSA scene, the, you know, the, the, the da'wah organization scene, the educational institutions, the masjids that are being built, it's so cool. Right, mm -hmm. and the we're so ahead of the Europeans because you, I've been to France, I've been to Germany, and they don't, they don't, they can't even dream of some of the things we're doing here, right? So it felt like we're like ahead here. And then American speakers, Canadian speakers, Western speakers generally were open with welcome with open arms in Malaysia and Indonesia, and mm -hmm. you know, you go somewhere, you're like royalty out there, and we're like, why? We must be thought leaders too, because they're like. Yeah. But then I, I, again, I like to step back and say, well, what's going on here, right? And then I realized, so the, the, the young people that are uh, teaching Islam, generally, I'm not pointing out at anybody individually, generally. When they, you say young, what, do you, what age group are you defining that? Under 50. Let's go. Let me, let, me be, let, me be, <laughs> let me be very generous to myself and include my I'm 45, so let me, let, me, let me still feel young. <laughs> so, it's beyond youth, but sure. <laughs> so, so we go to learn from the Muslim world, at some seminary, whether you end up in Azhar, Medina, Deoba, some madrasa, Deoba, madrasa. Okay. you went somewhere, okay. then you came back, and now you're basically teaching what you learned, but with an American accent, with some, you know, hipster jokes here and there. Yeah. But basically, you're regurgitating what you picked up there, right? So, but then also what you're doing, not again, not individually someone, what you're doing also is you're... Um, you're making it sound like a really fantastical romantic experience that you had when you were sitting at the feet of your sheikh and you were, he was dropping these flowers of wisdom and you were just noting them down, subhanAllah, the way. And then you have these kids that have never seen that kind of an exotic experience. They're sitting there in the halaqa, mashallah, the sheikh. Oh my God, this is so amazing. The knowledge. You know, and there's, there's this like, like this almost hippie thing going on. And I was like, okay, let me go to the source. Let me go to the madrasa where, you know, you ex you exotically acquired these things yeah. and had this fantastical experience, you know. And let me just kind of talk to your teachers. Let me engage with them. Um, because I wanted to take my curiosity about the Qur'an further and further. And alhamdulillah, one of the things I've been able to do behind the scenes is just engage with scholars personally and very unfiltered around the world. And so I did that in the last couple of years. I just went to Islamic institutions and heads of madaris and just speaking to ulama, Mashallah. right? And by God, their criticism of their own institutions was worse than mine. Their and criticism of their own madrasa. Of their own madrasa systems. Mm. And how they're producing, for lack of a better word, they're not producing thinkers. And the, the whole system needs an upgrade. And how producing it's, people that just regurgitate information. They regurgitate. Than, and not only do they regurgitate, they glorify that regurgitation as the only authentic way to bring Islam to society. So not only am I going to regurgitate this, this is the authentic right way. This cannot be challenged or questioned. Right? And the top scholarship does. The top scholar. When you go to them, they're like, they're like, you're way cooler than all your students combined, bro. I mean, Sheikh. Like how how does how does this work? Well, it's you know the system's in place, and now it's too late to change things. Or there's a bureaucracy in place. There's an expectation you're going to look a certain way when you come out. You're going to talk a certain way when you come out. Islamic studies came to a screeching like as far as it's 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 it pushing the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I'm limited. I'm limited in my space of uh, the work on tafsir, right? And so I became really interested in tafsir research, the history of tafsir research, how is tafsir being approached. That's where you've kind of just zoned yeah, in. zoned in, right? Zoned so, in. Okay. so um, and they have this, this concept of tajarzo, even in fiqh and ijazah. Like you could be, you can be an authority in a juz of something, in a oh, piece of something. I never heard that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the classical fuqaha used to have these ideas that you have, you, you just did, um, you did your all your work on this one ayah. So you have an authority to speak on this ayah. Like a PhD in yeah. this ayah, that's it. Kind of like that, okay. right? So you don't have to be the know-all of all things, mm -hmm. which is the, the next problem I have is that a graduate from a particular school presents themselves as the representative of all of Islam and all of its intellectual heritage, mm. 
homie, that's a little too big for one person. For a five, six year degree, like there's no way. Even if it's a 20 year degree. The, and the people at the top realize, no, I have this corner in which I made some contribution, mm -hmm. but the ocean is way too big for me. But the, the, the lower tier grads are the loudest ones. And they're the ones that are, they speak in the most authoritative, like, this is it kind of ways. Mm. And it's baffling to me. Like the, the intellectual arrogance, it just baffles me. It, it, it's confusing to me almost. One of these graduates, one time, he had, um, no institutions shall be named, no individual shall be pointed out. Came, but was a well-known scholar. And the people who don't really distinguish scholarship from scholarship, right? But well-known scholar came to my office and they'll have one of my tafasir open on the desk. You go, so this is the one you get your things from. <laughs> and I was like, actually, no, on literary issues, when it comes to uh, uh, how ideas are progressing within a surah, I do read Islahi. But when it comes to balaghi nuances, I read Ibn Ashur and Alusi. And then probably if they miss something, I'll go back further in Razi and Kasha. And then when it comes to the Athar, even though I start with Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, I'll move on to Qurtubi because I think he synthesizes things really beautifully from the Athari perspective. And I kind of started walking him through my library. And he goes, do you have a list? And I said, you're the alim. I'm not the alim. You're the, you're the sheikh. I'm, the, I'm just the guy. I'm just a research guy. And it, then to, not to dismiss those that actually do the work, but what I've realized is the people who actually do the work are not that loud. They're busy. They're busy. They're busy reading with their nose in a book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's literally what it is. And so, and then sometimes I'll hear speeches and people will say things that like with such like pounding the podium and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says X, Y, Z. And I'm like, no, no, he doesn't. Actually, he really doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then after the talk, I'm not going to call him out on stage or even in public backstage. I'll be like, bro, you said this, but look at this, look at this, look at this. He goes, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's my point. Wow. That's kind of my point, you know. So I, I've become more, hum, more humble to my own ignorance in Quranic studies the more I've moved forward. Like, even just studying Surah Al-Qiyamah, right? Yeah. This was new education for me. Like, every surah I take on now is just entirely, like, freshman. Yeah, you were here for a week. We were actually trying to get a hold of you earlier. And you spent the entire, I think you spent almost every morning. Reviewing before the three hour dark side. No, I, I, I'm, so, I'm, I, my study of Surah Al Taghabun ended almost a month ago. I've been studying Surah Al Qiyamah full time at least six hours a day. I've been studying Surah Al Qiyamah since that time.